It seems that it's finally about to happen. Intel's worst nightmare is beginning to unfold. As yes, Apple is apparently planning to bring some huge changes to the Mac this year at WWDC. It looks like one of the features that we're expecting most on the Galaxy Fold 2 might not make it. And it also appears that Apple is starting production of the 2020 iPhones, but that might not hint to an earlier launch. I'm Jaime Rivera, and I'm sorry to disappoint all of you that complained about the lack of Monday jokes. I'm honestly not even aware of when Monday is lately, but this is Parking Out Daily. The official news today begin with deals, and I know somebody asked the other day if we could make deals at the end of the video because uh, these are more US-centric. Actually, if you follow the links, they will take you to your respective stores, and it's not only in the United States that you'll find some deals in certain products. Think about it is Amazon currently has the 2018 12.9 inch Wi-Fi only iPad Pro for $220 off, leaving the 256 gigabyte space gray variant for 929 bucks shipped. If you want the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6, it's currently $130 off at B&H, leaving it at $599. The Google Pixel 3a is $60 off, leaving it at $340 for the 64 gigabyte variant. The 3a XL is also $55 off, leaving it at $424 shipped. And finally, the Samsung Galaxy A51 is $45 off, leaving it at $285 shipped. And we actually have a comparison between that and the iPhone SE, making that phone a lot more compelling. But we've got that in addition to Razer headphones and more in the links in the description. Now, for those of you that were waiting for the resurrection of HTC, and I am actually one of those people, well, it seems that it's here, but it's not exactly what was promised, or at least let's just say that the new CEO overpromised and pretty much underdelivered. I mean, he did say that the company that was famous for flagships was going to be back at again, but nope. Recently, the HTC Desire 20 Pro was spotted on the Google Play support, Bluetooth SIG and Wi-Fi Alliance, but now HTC has pretty much made at least the event official. The company just put out a teaser banner which says, save the date for June 16. Some leaks of the specifications include a Qualcomm Snapdragon 665, 6GB of RAM, a 6.5 inch LCD display, running Android 10 out of the box. The teaser is pretty dark, but if you look closely, we have a punch hole on the display, a pretty long camera array, and well, I didn't know you could do punch holes on LCD, so I'm hoping that that's actually an OLED, but the point being is, I was really enthusiastic for the HTC that I miss. And I even wonder if I have to remind the CEO of how the Desire lineup started, which had nothing to do with making mid-rangers. And yes, I do read the comments. I get constantly asked which is the watch that I've been wearing lately. It's the Galaxy Watch Active 2 for a ton of reasons. One of them is, yeah, it's, it's really hot. And yesterday we covered how the Galaxy Watch 3 went through NTBC certification. Now XDA found the watch on the Samsung wearable application code. They also recovered an image which confirms that it will be called the Galaxy Watch 3 after all. However, that's actually not all they found. The app also revealed the bean-shaped earbuds, which we are considering will be the Galaxy Buds S, that we actually covered some time ago. However, we don't have the official name for these products, but yeah, continuing on to the hottest news of yesterday, there are a ton of products that are actually really compelling coming to this next unpacked. And since we're talking Samsung, let's also discuss the fact that even if we might be surprised by wearables, we're not necessarily going to be surprised by foldables to a certain degree. I mean, we've been covering the whole dream of having a Galaxy Note variant of the Fold, meaning a Galaxy Fold with a S Pen. It seems that that might not necessarily be the case. According to a new report from South Korea, Samsung will omit the S Pen due to the durability issues on the folding screen. You see, the Note 10 display's thickness, which allows for the S Pen to work, is 0.4 millimeters, while the UTG we're expecting on the Fold 2 brings 0.3 millimeters, meaning it's not as durable enough to support the S Pen. On the positive side, the report claims that the Galaxy Fold 2 will pack in 120 hertz display with high resolution, and also 250 56 gigs of storage is also part of the benefits that we currently already have. In addition to apparently a lower price, I'm really disappointed. I thought that this was going to be a possibility and I do remember the old days where if we had a resistive touchscreen, it was actually made as plastic and if we used the stylus, it would scratch the screen. So I do understand that part, but I wonder how are they gonna do it with that polymer that they still provide to foldables even with the UTG. 
Now moving the spotlight over to Apple, let's discuss the delays that we've been covering for iPhones for a long time. I mean, we've heard the possibility that given the BOE displays, even some of these models might be made earlier just to test them out. BOE LG, not as good as others that they've already been using from Samsung, but apparently that's not gonna be just for that lineup. According to a new Digit Times report, Apple will be completing their second phase of engineering validation and testing for the upcoming iPhones at the end of June, allowing for production to begin in July. The wording on the report makes it seem like if all the phones will enter production, it might launch at the same time, but analysts like Ming-Chi Kuo have claimed that the higher-end models will be delayed due to the antenna and package design changes to support millimeter wave 5G. Now this could mean that we will still get an announcement in September with a possible launch in Q4, meaning sometime late October, early November, whatever the case may be, let's hope it's none of these, that they actually all get announced in September and launched, but obviously I believe the economy is also going to play a big role here. And finally, the hottest news today have to do with Apple, again, this time with what we're expecting for WWDC. I mean, for the last couple of years, we've been sort of disappointed by this event because we get the latest version of iOS, macOS, and now iPadOS and Wear OS. TVOS final also mentioned it, but the problem is that we usually don't get hardware. Apparently this year that will be a different story, but mainly because there's going to be a huge change. A very major one that only reminds me of the last time something like that happened, which was more than 15 years ago. According to a new Bloomberg report, Apple will be announcing the fact that they will move from Intel chips to ARM base Max. Yeah. I know. The initiative is apparently codenamed Kalamata. It will be announced at WWDC, but it's just the announcement. The transition will happen until next year, or at least gradually, to allow developers to prepare for the change. Apple reportedly made the decision after noticing a slower performance gain with Intel's latest processors, and tests have shown that these custom ARM chips offer higher performance obviously on a different architecture. These chips will be based on the A14 chip that will come on the iPhone 12 and will be built on a more efficient five nanometer process, though we assume that there will be other changes and additional improvements. Apple is working on three custom processors apparently, most likely based on different performance tiers. They will come along with a GPU and a neural engine for machine learning. And we also have a new leak from Twitter that claims that Apple will be launching a new redesigned iMac, though we don't necessarily know if that will bring, you know, the new chip. It will have an iPad Pro-like design with a Pro display bezels, T2 chip and AMD Navi GPU, in addition to a new type of fusion drive. So yeah, this is major. I mean, if you remember the last time that Apple did something like this was between PowerPC and Intel at the time when PowerPC was just not getting the same amount of power. And this is pretty much the same case. We've also seen the rise of AMD, so it could also be that play. But let us know in the comments down below. What do you think? Do you think that it would be good for Apple to make a move like this to completely ditch Intel eventually? In my case, I feel that it's not going to happen with every product. I feel that products like the MacBook, which is no longer the new MacBook, is no longer being produced. I believe that that and probably the MacBook Air would be the products that would be using these chips. And I do believe that, you know, devices like the Mac Pro, devices like the MacBook Pro even, will most likely stick with Intel chips or probably a play with AMD. We don't know. But leave us a comment down below. We'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also, follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram and follow me on my personal handles to see me forget what time of day it is. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.